whether it's a family you choose, or in some cases, family that chooses you. And that is what comes to mind today, is I know I'm leaving, and all I can really say is thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you, John Lomax. Good morning, I'm Jen Dalton. I'm Sheila Gray. I'm Aaliyah Hodges. I'm Bob Herzog. And I'm meteorologist Tara Blake. Thank you for joining us this morning for Good Morning Cincinnati, 9 o'clock on a somber, somber Wednesday. And former co-worker John Lomax has passed away. And as sad as we are, we are sharing fond memories <laughs> yes, and laugh. stories of our dear friend John. He was an institution here at Local 12. The Good Morning Cincinnati team is heartbroken. We're still in shock, to say the least. John anchored this newscast for more than 25 years, and I was so fortunate to sit beside John for eight years here before he retired, but Bob and Jen so much longer. His kindness, humor, and unwavering dedication to his work and those around him was truly inspirational. So we'll be spending most of this morning, we have been throughout the morning, we'll continue to 10 o'clock today, and you're going to hear more about John, of course, throughout the day on Local 12 today, honoring him as he poured his heart into us and into this station and to all of you for 40 years. John retired on April 29th, 2022. That date was proclaimed John Lomax Day in Hamilton County. The Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, does hereby proclaim the 29th day of April, 2022, as John Lomax Day in Hamilton yeah. County. Yeah. Yeah. Every day is John Lomax Day, but part of his <laughs> legacy lives on in the tri-state through the causes that he championed while he was on TV. Yeah, he thought it was so important to use his voice to help others, and he did that. Mm -hmm. So we want to highlight some of the causes that John held dearly, and maybe it will inspire you to help them too. We're starting with the Joe Nuxall Miracle League. John attended the Nuxie Bash every year for many years, and he served as the Miracle League's opening day Grand Marshal in 2022. He absolutely loved that. That. The Miracle League helps people with special abilities experience the fun and joy of baseball. And John was asked about the Miracle League, and here's what he said. I can't think of a story with more impact and as inspiring than the one that has been written at the Joe Nuxall Miracle Fields. I've seen hope, dreams, and community in action every time I've gone there. John also served as Master of Ceremonies at the dedication of the Northern Kentucky 9-11 Memorial. It's located at Crescent Springs Memorial Park. John was on the air on that morning, that terrible, terrible morning of the terror attacks with his longtime co-anchor and our friend, Cammie Dirking. And that morning, the two of them made a pledge to one another that they would never see each other without saying, I love you. John was also a fierce supporter of the American Heart Association. He's done countless commercial spots promoting the Heart Mini, and he often took part in the event. John was a stroke survivor and considered promoting heart health an important part of his work in the community. John was also an animal lover. For years, he hosted the SBA's Pet Telethon here at the station and made appearances at the Furball. John had so much love for his many dogs over the years, including, and we always love the names, Johnny Cash and Snoop Dogg. I remember when he got five. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg uh -huh. was a little puppy, and my, yeah. my kids were volunteering with us that, that year at the Telethon. And that there was the shot of my kids holding Snoop Dogg, and Donna Lomag, John's wife, called and said, um, you're going to bring that dog home. <laughs> right? uh, and he did, because he did what Donna yeah, said. They had as many as like five at one time. And they would like take yeah. in other dogs. Yeah. They would watch their kids' dogs. Yeah, they would watch other there people's was always dogs. A house. At one point, this is one of my favorite John Lomax stories. His, his granddaughter, Ada, they watched her while Lindsay was at work. And the dogs would always go to the window whenever the mailman or anybody would come mm -hmm. and bark. And Ada went to the window and barked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he loved that. Yeah. He loved that he story. Loved animals. <laughs> he really did. Well, this is my favorite memory of John Lomax. Oh. I told my family last night, Bob had called me, and, and that John had passed. And I went out into the living room, and I told my son, and he said, well, he was the first one at your work to hold me. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's John holding my son, who's now nine, when he was just a baby, and of course... He doesn't remember that moment, but he remembers this picture because I've showed it to him mm -hmm. so many times. And Christopher and John have shared moments at different events that we've had. Yeah. You know, we all get together, and mm -hmm. uh, there's a great memory of them sitting down. We went to some place for brunch, and he and John just had this chat. 
Yes, <laughs> I, think I remember it was about that. Hot Wheels or mm-hmm. cars or something. But oh, just they the were two sitting, of them were in it, you mm-hmm. know, together. They were, it was Taste of Belgium. Taste of Belgium. We were at Tel- Taste of Belgium, and they were sitting in these two like stools at the bar at the, bar, at the yeah. counter. And you and Perry and I were catching yeah. up, and the two of them were down there having like a deep conversation. Yeah. He had this way of bonding with, mm-hmm. kids, with kids immediately. Mm-hmm. I, w- I was telling Jen the story. I think I think it was at Adam Clement's engagement party, mm-hmm. and he walked up to my son Danny. He said, "Danny, <laughs> God invented basketball." Here, we, have, we have something breaking right now. We Let's, need to get to. Uh, oh, it's the Cincinnati FOP is extending condolences Aww. to John. Um, saying they released a statement. Here, let me put my glasses on. Like Cammy says, John Lomax was a cherished Cincinnati institution for more than 30 years, said FOP Lodge 69 President Ken Kober. He was a kind soul and a man dedicated to helping the Cincinnati community. Over the years, John worked closely with the Greater Cincinnati Crime Stoppers Organization, and he was a true friend to law enforcement. Our prayers and sympathies go out to his family. Thank you to the Cincinnati so FOP for sending that along. And really, thank you to so many people yeah. who are holding us up today and giving yeah. us strength with the, their positive thoughts. And Aaliyah has a, a lot yeah. of those people, I think, their comments over on the, the Storyteller Monitor right now. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, you know, the news broke late last night. If You're just waking up and finding out. And immediately we began hearing from so many of you sending your thoughts and prayers for John's wife, his daughter, son, and grandchildren, and for his local 12 family as well. We're going to read some of your comments on Bob's Facebook page. Lori says, tomorrow in his honor, which is today, will be a John Lomax kind of weather day. He always would remark on how if it was a nice warm day that it was Lomax weather, which is going to be 70 degrees today, must be a sign that all is well for John. He is sending all who loved him some sunshine and warmth, prayers for comfort for all. Rebecca says, oh my gosh, I am so sorry for your loss. It was incredible watching you two together and into his retirement, how you kept in touch. My thoughts to you and his family, so many memories. And uh, Nanny says, so sad to hear this. He was one of the best and always so cheerful. I remember meeting John Lomax Short, shortly, short time uh, at the Nuxi Miracle League or the Nuxi badge for the Joe Nux Hall Miracle League back in 2022. And he is everything that you guys describe him to be so kind and, and very patient. And we're going to have more memories on John Lomax after the break. Time to look at some headlines this morning. School leaders' failure to act led to the murder of a local 14-year-old student. That's the claim in a lawsuit filed by a former Holmes High School teacher. 14-year-old Amani Smith was shot and killed in January as he walked to his grandmother's house after school. His parents say his murder was sparked by a problem his older brother had with the shooting suspect. Morgan Gilvin is suing the Covington Board of Education, claiming leaders did nothing about threatening behavior in her classroom, which she reported. She says she was forced to resign last month because of severe emotional distress. Smith's parents say they're glad Gilvin is stepping up to expose what they believe are failures by school leaders. I reached out to the principal, the school board, the officer at the school, um, everyone. I spoke to four different people on different occasions. I was dismissed completely, and my sons lay there and died right across there, and I seen them. 17-year-old boy is charged with Will Smith with, with Smith's murder. Three other juveniles are charged with complicity to murder. We're getting a progress report on the work to replace the Western Hills Viaduct. Cincinnati's Department of Transportation says it will work to secure easements and permits before tearing down buildings and preparing the site this summer. The city sent out these renderings to show what it will look like. The new viaduct will be built 50 feet south of the existing one. It will have four lanes each way on one deck and a sidewalk on the north side. Construction is expected to take until 2032. A quick heads up for residents in Claremont County. Leaders will be retesting the siren system today. The county says the sirens failed to sound during the monthly test last Wednesday. The system has since been independently tested and confirmed to be operational. The sirens will be retested today at noon. This year's Cincinnati Open is going to be bigger and better than ever. Here are some of the changes coming to the Mason Tennis Tournament. 
First, the entire top deck at center court will be redesigned and upgraded with a portion being converted into an exclusive area designed as an Italian courtyard. There will also be new suites around the grandstand court, plus four new practice courts. Lastly, every ticket holder will be sitting in a more comfortable seat. Over 12,000 top-of-the-line padded seats will replace the bleachers. These changes are part of a $260 million investment by tournament owner Beekmont Capital. The company pledged these improvements after announcing its decision to keep the tournament in Mason for the next 25 years. Joe Mixon will take the field for the Houston Texans this coming season. NFL insider Jordan Schultz says the Bengals will be getting a seventh round draft pick in exchange for Mixon. The veteran running back is going to be a good pickup for the Texans. Mixon is set to replace Houston's leading rusher, Devin Singletary, who is reportedly signing with the New York Giants. And a very special surprise for one local Chick-fil-A worker. Yasmeen George works at the store inside Kenwood Mall and was awarded a $25,000 scholarship from the company. Chick-fil-A CEO Andrew Cathy presented George with the check. They also gifted her a supersized sauce packet. Inside of it was a brand new MacBook laptop. Everyone from her friends and family to a marching band were on hand for the celebration. I'm in shock. I, I feel like I have to go back to sleep to see what really happened today. Um, I, it's crazy. Yasmin says she's still deciding where she wants to go to college, but she's narrowed it down to Clark Atlanta, Spelman, North Carolina AT&T, and Howard, all HBCUs. And this is part of Chick-fil-A's True Inspiration Scholars Program. This year, they're giving out over $26 million in scholarships. Congratulations. It is 9-13 right now. A fairy tale comes to life on the stage at the Aronoff. We speak with a cast member for the hit Broadway musical, Peter Pan. That's next here on Good Morning Cincinnati.